Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our weekly conjunction series. And uh, today we are going to be covering our conjunctions of Sun, Moon, Mars, and Ketu. And what happens when these four planets are conjunct in your horoscope. And as always, if you do not know where these conjunctions are placed in your horoscope, what other astrological placements you have, all the details for that, check out the links here. Check out my full astrological report, including my books, Astrology, Conjunction, Aspects, and Mahatashas at the Speed of Light, including all my consultations and reading at this link. So, Sun, Moon, Mars, Ketu, Conjunction in one house. Boy, talk about being born on the wrong side of the family. <laughs> um, usually, even in like, you know, Nadi astrology, Nadi texts. I think I believe it's Chandrakala Nadi or Pullipani Jyotish, where I read it's just that constant fighting between mother and father, constant property problems with the brother, with the parents. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to suggest, because look, in this conjunction, Sun is a father, Moon is a mother, Mars is a brother. Ketu represents past karmas. So, and Ketu can represent maternal or paternal lineage based on if you're born in the daytime or nighttime. So, here, if you just use logic, you know, Ketu and Mars represent sharp objects. They represent flag. They, one is a charging army, one is a third army, meaning like the still army, the conquered army that says, okay, I've achieved this. So that means the two planets naturally bring about symbolism of war, symbolism of fights. And then Sun, Moon, the illuminaries, represents the notion of ourself, our soul, our mind, our family, our mother, our father, because we're made from what? Sun, Moon. Why? Sun's lineage, meaning father's DNA, and mother lineage, mother's DNA. And they come together and we are created based on the karmas we have acquired. So our soul waits when two people conceive each other where our karma, own past life karma, can perfectly be aligned with that lineage we are born. So don't think always that you're going to be born in the same family over and over again. It's all based upon the karmas that you have accumulated in past lives or especially in this life. Based on that, the next life, you may have to wait. You might be in Pitraloka, Brahmaloka, you know. So, based on that, you're born. So, this is why it's a logic. It's, 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 it's just simply logic. When you use these conjunctions, clearly shows that regardless of which house this conjunction is placed in, naturally, there's going to be arguments on this matter. So, one thing I always suggest, whenever I see this conjunction of Sun, Moon, Mars, Ketu, very closely especially that do not do not care for family property or family wealth or if your brother is about to get some uh, inheritance do not do not argue about that and you escape the malefic effect of this conjunction because this conjunction is here in your birth chart to bother you not to bother anybody else they're here to bother you they're here to toe with you to play with you don't be played. Do not create situation. Ask for situations which is going to get you in fights with family members. If your mother has, let's say, $2 million in property, assets, she wants to divide that among the three children that she has, and you're one of them. Other ones get 40-40%. You get 20%. So what happens now? Automatically, the brain says, oh, argue with the mother why did you give me the only 20 percent and it starts from that argument and it moves to other places and then suddenly the entire family is in this mess so the Diwali's the Christmas no longer are joined together but obviously it takes a very very high qualified mind to escape this role uh, because you are going to be agitated you're in a very fiery mode right now because you got two knives, sharp objects, Mars and Ketu, with the heated sun. They're affecting your moon. Why? Because moon is the most vulnerable planet in astrology. 
moon gets affected very quickly. So you'll be all agitated. No, 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 no. I don't care about what this conjunction says. I don't care what Kapil Raj says about this conjunction. I need my money. I need my property. I've been waiting for it. Well, go ahead and go for it. Of course, there's certain instances that you can win over and get the property that you want. But you're always, 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 always going to pay price for it. Whether it's not talking to your brother or sister for the rest of your life, not talking to your parents for the rest of your life, things that ha it happens. You know all the Indian TV serials that you watch, especially when my mom comes over, she always Indian TV and it's all family problems over property, inheritance and money. And I'm like, man, they all must have this conjunction in their horoscope. Um, even if you're married with the, with the spouse too, do not argue about how much money you're getting from your spouse. Let's say your spouse wins a lot of money from her family. Let's say she wins like $10 million suddenly. And she's not giving anything to you. She's keeping it in a bank account. That's it. Don't create an argument. Oh, I'm your husband. I need to have all the money. I need to have half of it. Blah, blah, blah. This is my money. Well, you can go for it. It's going to be a price to pay. Because if she gets pissed or he gets pissed, they're going to file for divorce. You're divorced. And yes, you got the money. There. You paid your price. So if you can afford, if you are smart enough to avoid it, avoid it. Although I feel like most people can't. Because it's money. It entices you. It tempts you. Also, this is obviously a conjunction of somebody who usually I've found to be either military, government, police work, or especially like in medical field, where you're using technical skills to you know, uh, deal with people's health, even like a surgeon, dentists. Engineers are seen from this as well, especially nowadays. Um, if you have this, let's say, uh, conjunction happening in Arathra Nakshatra, Sastabishak Nakshatra, Ashwani Nakshatra, Chitra Nakshatra, Dhanishta Nakshatra, even Uttrabhadrapada Nakshatra, mostly I've seen they do very well in electronic engineering. Uh, mechanical engineering if mercury is involved then obviously software engineering is very good but the uh, the mind is full of fire you got to remember the mind the pitta is very very strong within the mind and pitta people do very well in technical fields fields where the mind is so occupied in trying to figure something out technically that that pitta washes away so whenever it's like they're you know you see a person when they're in their garage they're like you know, welding something and then they're trying to create something and they forget about the rest of the world. If they have this conjunction, when they come out from working from the garage, they'll be much more calm because that pitta has been exerted. The energy has been exerted. But obviously, this is the conjunction that really can make a person very, very uh, hard-headed, very like a stone. They, sometimes they may not even have emotions. In certain signs, it can create a psychopath. Someone who murders people and has no emotions that I've just taken away opportunity of somebody who may have had children, who might have accomplished great things in life. They'll just, they, they really feel human being as a rag doll. Like they'll just take it apart. Oh, okay. Oh, look, there's blood coming out. Nah, nah. Kind of like, you know, uh, who's that? Um, Mark Kleplinski, the Iceman? who murdered literally like 400 plus people like a hit, as a hitman. It was a great job. He was getting like literally five, 10,000 per killing someone, 20,000 for killing someone. And this was his job. He was doing that four or five people a week. And he would just slaughter them, murder them, you know, give them a slow death. It's just, he enjoyed it. Oh yeah, Richard Kuklinski. So it creates that. This is not a conjunction that just creates family fights. This can create a person who whose emotions are hidden. Because remember, moon is in the axis of Rahu and Ketu. Okay? So the mind is blind. Emotions are blind. It is with Mars, meaning there's aggressive emotions. It's with sun, that means it's burnt up. The emotions are burnt up. 
So what does this create? This creates a person who could secretly be a psychopath and they may not tell him. Like there are people who are family people, nice people, they raise children, get old, die, but internally they know they are kind of little psychopath. They are ready to just, it's like if they could go to war and murder somebody, it'll give them really, you know, um, great gratification. But obviously it happens in certain signs and nakshatras only. Most of the time, common folks who have this, it's all about dealing with that family problem, especially with brothers. And especially, you should be always careful going into a partnership with a man, with a male. Regardless if you're a male or female, if you're ever doing some business partnership, it's better not to do any partnership at all in business. Doesn't matter if it's in the seventh house, doesn't matter if it's in the fourth house, third house. Um, in my own statistical analysis of doing like career consultations for people who are wanting to do business or who failed in business and they say my partner created this and that and the, it was, uh, the conjunction was happening in the ninth house had nothing to do with the seventh house, even through the Lordship. Yet it's creating problems because male, Mars represents male energy. Fatherly figure, mentors, women, so you're dealing with these two entities all the time, all day long, whether it's their family, if your family or not, you're better off just doing business by yourself, working by yourself. Because this is a person who has to be the general. They have to be in charge. And the reason why they get into problems in uh, partnership is because of the fact they're trying to take over and the other person might be thinking, no, it needs to be 50-50 or I want to take over. This is great for somebody who can be very aggressive in uh, land business, real estate business. Because in their mind, they're like, I've already got this home. I want this home at any price. They're very good at negotiating, selling and buying homes. Because both, you know, Ketu and Mars represents land. But military becomes very important, especially with the symbols of, of Ketu being a flag. They protect the flag. Like these people are very, very, um, have a strong feeling about their country flag. Like don't disrespect their country flag in front of them. The pitta comes out. They lose their intelligence when they get angry. And then suddenly the fire, all they see is fire. So yeah, this is a conjunction that has to be dealt with in a very delicate way. The best remedy that I can tell you is do Kriya Yoga. Because with Kriya Yoga, you're burning your past life karmas. You're burning your past life sins. So the malefic energy of Mars Ketu, especially Ketu, that represents the past accumulated karmas and moon, which is your Akashic records, are coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. But again, it's so hard to convince a person of this conjunction to do something more sattvic. So <laughs> that's another thing that I've noticed. They, they want practical, logical solutions now but they don't realize this is the practical, logical solutions for them. So guys, this was my analysis of Sun, Moon, Mars, Ketu conjunction. If you're doing my channel, subscribe below. And if you wanna know where your conjunction is placed, all my books, reports, consultations, for that, check out the links here. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow with my interview with uh, E.K. Dalip Kumar. Bye-bye.